All right, so now what we're gonna be looking at is some histology slides. Some are gonna be epithelium, some will be connective tissue. And we have to just do a quick review and understanding of how do we know if we're looking at epithelium tissue? We have to be able to see lots of cells packed closely together. That's the first thing. And then you have to go, all right, now that they're closely together, I know it's epithelium. Do I see one cell layer thick or do I see multiple? Because that's going to differentiate between something being called simple squamous versus stratified squamous, right? If it's flat, irregular cells, it's squamous. If they're cube shaped, it's cuboidal. And if they look like tall columns, then they're columnar. Okay, so you can have simple squamous, simple cuboidal, simple columnar, or you can have stratified squamous, stratified cuboidal. Now, remember the stratified columnar is typically pseudo stratified. It looks like it's stratified when it's really not. And then we have transitional, which is around organs that can get bigger or smaller. So when we take a look here, you have to find the lumen. So that's a key word, right? So if you see the lumen, which is the hole, you then go to the layer that's next to the lumen, which is here and it's here, right? You're not looking here. You're looking at the layer that's closest to the lumen or the apical layer that's to the surface, one of the two. So here, these are red blood cells, which means this has to be a lumen of an artery or a vein, one of the two. Because we see the nucleus here and it's only one cell layer thick, this is simple squamous epithelium. Okay, let's look at another one. Now you don't have to know it's a vein. You're not gonna have to identify that it's a vein. That's asking a little bit much. When we look here, we have central nuclei. Nuclei are in the center. These are very flat, irregular cells. This is simple squamous epithelium. When we look here, here's a lumen. These are flat, irregular cells that line this, okay? This here is the kidney. This is simple squamous epithelium. We're not looking at these around the outside. If we're pointing here, these may be cuboidal, but we're pointing to this, that is a flat nuclei, it's simple squamous epithelium. Let's look here. Now these look like they're cube shaped, all of these. Here's the lumen, these are cube shaped. They're not flat, they're more square because they're one cell layer thick, they're simple cuboidal. And these are found in the kidney tubules, simple cuboidal epithelium. This is one, tubule, so these are simple cuboidal, these are simple cuboidal. Here's another tubule, these are simple, these are simple, okay? I would be very clear if I were asking you anything on a slide. I would agree if I pointed here, it may be a little bit tricky, but here, no doubt, one cell layer thick, they're closely packed together, it's epithelium, it's one cell layer, it's cubed, simple cuboidal epithelium is the answer. Now we look here, bunch of circles. We see a bunch of lumen. When I look at what's around it, well, they're not flat, they're not column. These are more cube shaped. It's telling us it's the proximal convoluted tubule, which we know is in the kidneys. Those always have simple cuboidal epithelium, simple cuboidal. A little bit of a better picture of the kidney. Here's the lumen, here's a lumen, here's a lumen. If you look at what's around it, they're cube shaped, simple cuboidal epithelium once again. Okay, now let's change it up. Now we're looking at the small intestines. A lot of absorption of nutrients take place in the gut. Now, it looks like we have a bunch of nuclei in the center. There are cells that look column shaped. It's telling us that we have microvilli on the top. This is gonna to be simple columnar. 
epithelium. These cells next to it, these cavities that look hollowed out, these are goblet cells. And in a previous lecture, you heard me say that goblet cells produce mucus. So this goblet cell will produce mucus and the mucus will line and sit on top of these microvilli and it can be a glue for nutrients to be absorbed to, to eventually take in to become part of your cells and tissues. You need to absorb those nutrients and the goblet cell can produce mucus that sticks to the microvilli that allows us to absorb those nutrients. This is such a neat picture because again, these are column shaped. It's a little bit easier to see these columnar cells. Here is a goblet cell and it's secreting. You can see it here. It's secreting out that mucus. That's called exocytosis. Same thing here, exocytosis. So these are simple columnar epithelium. You can see it's to the external surface here. We're looking at the external surface. Same thing here, here's the external surface. These are one cell layer thick. These are column shaped, so simple columnar epithelium. Now this one, okay, they're definitely columnar shaped. Here's the surface. This is connective tissue down at the bottom. This is like the basement membrane. This is the cement of which epithelium can stick to. Lots of goblet cells that we see, but these are columnar cells. But notice the nuclei are scattered. So you may wanna go, hey, these are stratified columnar, but you know, there's no such thing. So we call it pseudo stratified columnar. And because there are cilia up here, we can be very specific and call it pseudostratified, ciliated, columnar epithelium. This happens to be of the trachea. So what happens here is you've got goblet cells producing mucus, it'll stick to the cilia and the cilia are beating from inferior to superior to try and prevent a lot of debris and dust particles and toxins from going through the trachea, the windpipe, and making it into the lungs. When people smoke, smoke is what breaks down the cilia or paralyzes the cilia. When you paralyze or degenerate the cilia, you have nothing but carcinogens and toxins and dust particles and debris that make it into the lungs. And anything that makes it into the lungs makes it into circulation. Anything that you breathe ends up going into your blood. And if it's in your blood, it, it is gonna be transported to other parts of the body, okay? Let's look at this one. Again, these are columnar cells. Looks like the nuclei are at different levels. So you'd wanna go, all right, stratified columnar epithelium, but we know there's no such species. So it's pseudo stratified columnar epithelium. And again, you've got cilia here. This again is the trachea, just another view. These are goblet cells. Once again, we know goblet cells produce mucus. Again, another close up view. This is the trachea again. You got cilia, you got goblet cells producing mucus and a bunch of columnar cells with their nuclei at different levels. So it's pseudo stratified columnar epithelium. Now let's shift gears. Now we're looking at the esophagus. This would be the lumen of the esophagus, the hole where food is gonna go down. Now here we have many, many layers of flat, irregular shaped cells. So these are squamous cells, but it's not simple. I mean, if it was simple squamous, if you swallowed a Cheez-It cracker that had a sharp corner to it and you didn't chew it well enough, you could scratch and damage that one cell layer thick. Because there's lots of food and hot and cold food going through the esophagus, you want many layers of protection. So there may be 20, 30 different layers of stratified squamous epithelium to protect the esophagus. Okay, so simple squamous epithelium. 
Here's the vaginal area. Again, here's the lumen. You see flat, irregular shaped cells, but not one cell layer thick, multiple layers, multiple. So it's stratified squamous epithelium. This is an area that could potentially be an area for abrasion or friction. So we need to have multiple layers of protection in the vaginal area. So it's stratified squamous epithelium. Now, this area here is dead cells that will eventually slough off, okay? Epithelium, these layers here will eventually slough off and the body makes more. Here's a close-up. Squamous cells, flat, irregular shape, but look how many there are. So it's not simple squamous, it would be stratified squamous epithelium. Here's the skin. Again, look at the top layer, many flat, irregular shaped cells. This would be not simple squamous, this would be stratified squamous. So epidermis is up here, dermis is down below. Again, up here on the top, stratified squamous epithelium, stratified squamous epithelium. Again, esophagus, flat irregular cells, many, maybe 25, 30 layers of it, stratified squamous epithelium of the esophagus. Again, up here, stratified squamous epithelium, not one cell layer, many cell layers. Now we're going to shift gears. Here's a lumen. Here's a lumen. What surrounds that? Well, they look like round cubes, but is it one cell layer? No, nah, this one here looks like it's a few layers, maybe two to three layers thick. So we're gonna call that stratified cuboidal epithelium. Now let's look here. Well, at the top, you got a round cell, then it looks cubed, then it looks a little longer, Right, And we looked at this is at the urinary bladder. What did I tell you about the urinary bladder? We know that that can change its shape. So think of the balloon. If you put a little circle with a permanent marker on a balloon and then you blow it up, that, can, that circle can certainly stretch itself out and change its shape, as do, does these cells, depending on how much urine is stored in the urinary bladder. So we call that transitional epithelium. Again, transitional epithelium, urinary bladder. If you look, here's the lumen of the urinary bladder. This one looks a little flat. This one looks round. This one looks flat. This one looks round. They start to change their shape. They're not really all uniform. Some are flat, some are cubed, some are more stretched out, depending on the shape of that irregular lumen. Transitional epithelium. Again, transitional epithelium. Some are round, some are cubed, some are longer, some are a little bit more stretched. Urinary bladder tells us it's transitional epithelium. Ah, great one. This one is so great because look, we can get two for the price of one. This is an artery. Now arteries can constrict or dilate. We know blood pressure can go up if your blood vessels constrict. We know if your blood vessels open up and dilate, we call that vasodilation, blood pressure goes down. So what's gonna do the constriction or dilation is smooth muscle, right? So this thicker purple section, this is smooth muscle. This is involuntary. These are the spindle shaped ones, non-striated. That's smooth muscle. But if you look at the lumen, this is where liquid connective tissue is going to be, right? Another type of tissue, connective tissue, that's red blood cells, going to be through here. But this layer is only one cell layer thick, simple squamous epithelium. So you have epithelium here, and then you have muscle here. And then you got connective tissue here, which is liquid connective tissue. That's where your red blood cells would be. So you got really three different types of tissues here. You got 
connective tissue, which would be blood. You got epithelium, which is that internal lining of the blood vessel right here. And then you got muscle, which is smooth muscle. You got three different things going on here. Now we're looking at uh, different types of, remember we, we covered uh, in connective tissue, there was areolar connective tissue and reticular connective tissue. So this is areolar connective tissue. This is what's gonna separate your skin from your muscles, right? It just looks like you got some fibers. Again, you got some cells scattered here and there with lots of matrix, lots of protein fibers. That's areolar connective tissue, a classical mesh-like appearance. Again, classical mesh-like appearance. This is areolar connective tissue. You're not gonna have to identify, well, this is an elastic fiber, this is a fibroblast. Just what type of connective tissue is this? Areolar. This is reticular fibers. That's reticular. This is reticular. This helps to give the organs their shape and contour. These are reticular connective tissue. Now, this is the one that students often confuse with, um, with squamous cells because they're like, oh yeah, I know this. This is flat, irregular shaped cells. This is squamous cells. But remember, squamous cells have nuclei that are centrally located. And here, you don't see centrally located nuclei. The nuclei are off to the periphery. That's adipose tissue. This is adipose, fat cells. There's no centrally located nucleus. These two here are dense regular connective tissue. Look how it looks different, dense regular to dense irregular. Focus on the collagen fibers, how parallel they are. See how tightly interconnected dense regular connective tissue is. You'll find these with muscles and tendons, right? Collagen fibers are parallel. They're closely packed together here and here. That's dense regular. But now look at the collagen fibers here. You see these two? are dense irregular. Notice how the collagen fibers, they're interwoven, not tightly together like they are here. These are scattered further apart in a variety of directions. Your eyeball has a lot of dense irregular. The skin has a lot of irregular connective tissue in the dermis to allow, like if you rub your eyeball, you can't, you're never instructed just rub your eyeball left to right or up and down. You can rub it in all different positions because the collagen fibers here are in a variety of positions to withstand that. So again, let's take a close look. Dense regular connective tissue, pretty tight collagen fibers, pretty tight collagen fibers, collagen fibers, and eh, they're interwoven in a variety of ways. This is dense irregular connective tissue. Now we had cartilage. The one that's really important to be able to stand out are these raindrops, right? If you look at these, these raindrops, these are hyaline cartilage. This is the perichondrium, but these are hyaline cartilage cells. They just look like hollowed out raindrops, okay? That's hyaline cartilage. Um, let's see, elastic cartilage. If you look, these are a little bit closer packed together, the elastic than the hyaline. hyaline. hyaline this is the one that you find near your diarthrodial joints, like your shoulder joint, your hip joint, your knee joints, uh, your ankle joints, anywhere there's a freely mo movable bone, your fingers, your elbows, your shoulders, all hyaline cartilage. This is fibrocartilage. Uh, fibrocartilage, this is what your intervertebral discs would look like. This is your strongest cartilage in the body. Uh, the intervertebral disc would look like this. Your pubic symphysis would look like this. And yeah, those are the two biggies, the pubic symphysis and the intervertebral disc. That's fibrocartilage. This is elastic. You'll find this around the nose and the ear, the eustachian tube, the lungs. And this one is hyaline cartilage. This is your articular cartilage, near your freely movable joints. 
You look at this, this one, this is what it looks like when you chop a tree down. This is the osteon, right? All those concentric rings. There's the central canal in the middle or the haversian canal. Each of those little dots is probably a lacuna where the osteocytes are located. This is compact bone. Only compact bone has osteons, right? Spongy bone has those trabecula. Okay, again, here's your compact bone. These are, each of these is an osteon. That's your central canal or herversion canal. There's the lacunae and what's inside of the lacunae, that's your osteocyte. Close up look. Not only can you see the lacunae, right? We know the osteocyte is in there, but look at the finger-like jellyfish extensions. That's the canaliculize. Those are the canaliculize. Okay, now we're at liquid connective tissue. We look at this, this is a blood smear. This is blood, but we're looking at two different things, three different things here. This is connective tissue, it's liquid connective tissue. We see a bunch of cells, they're not closely packed together. There's lots of extracellular matrix. What is the extracellular matrix around blood called, red blood cells? These are called plasma. That makes 55% of blood is plasma. 45% are these formed elements, such as your red blood cell, which is an erythrocyte. Here's a white blood cell. This nucleus has one, two, about three heads to it. That's a neutrophil. Three to five heads of a nucleus with that's granular. That is a neutrophil. Then you have your eosinophils and basophils as well. But this one, is only showing red blood cells or your erythrocyte. Notice the center of it is hypochromic. The periphery is brighter. It's thicker around the periphery and it's biconcave disc. So it's gonna be lighter in the center. We call that hypochromic. Red blood cells, plasma, that's your extracellular matrix. That's the plasma. And then you have, this is a white blood cell. In this case, it's called a neutrophil. Remember the three granular sites are basophil, eosinophil, and neutrophil. Okay, let me stop the recording and the screen share, and we'll see if you have any questions.